Alright, in this video we need to take a look at the final uh, decoding logic for our drum state struct. It's now time to tackle the task of going through all the various button combinations that come in from the raw input from a Rock Band 2 controller and make sense of those combinations in such a way that we can separate each individual drum and cymbal. Okay. So all of this is going to take place here inside of the drum state struct. We're going to begin right after our button flags get initialized, and we're going to create a section in here that is just for the purpose of making things a little bit more readable. If we think back to the raw input lesson, we were noting that various inputs, things like D-pad up and D-pad down, had special meanings, where D-pad up meant that the symbol that was present was the yellow symbol, and then down meant that that was the blue symbol. We also had a series of other buttons to indicate that there was a pad hit or a drum hit or there was a cymbal hit. And then, of course, the A, B, X, and Y buttons indicated the color of the drum that was hit. Now, since all of those meanings are encoded in things like right stick and right shoulder and D-pad up, we're going to resolve those to individual Boolean values just so that the logic portion of our code makes more sense if we read it straight out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a series of Boolean variables with a name that goes along with the type of flag that they are. So to begin with, we're going to make the uh, first two as pad and symbol. So that means right here we'll make a bool variable called pad, which is going to be initially set to false. Then we're going to make a second boolean called symbol, which is also going to start off as false. And the idea with these is that we'll simply take the right stick and right shoulder buttons, again remembering back to the raw input section, every time we had a drum hit or a drum pad, mm -hmm. we would end up with the right stick value along with whatever drum was hit. So the idea is that here in code, rather than con continuously reading out right stick, we can now just read out the name pad sure. versus symbol. So, what we'll do is, let's see, just to give a quick demonstration of where these are going, I'll drop in the first two if statements. There are more flags that we need to address. But just to show where these are going to be used, what we'll do is taking in the incoming pad state, we'll look at the buttons being pressed and decide which flags we need to set. So we'll say if pad state dot is button down, then we'll feed in buttons dot right stick. So if the right stick is pressed, Really, to us, that means that a pad is pressed. So we'll set pad equal to true. Then we can do the same thing for symbol. So I'm just going to begin by copying that if statement, checking for buttons dot right shoulder. If the right shoulder is pressed, then we'll set symbol to true. So that's the idea. This is, at this point, just remapping specific buttons to more convenient names. Now we do have more flags that we want to address. In addition to just knowing whether a pad or a symbol was hit, we're also going to store whether or not a specific color was hit. So we'll make four flags for red, yellow, blue, and green. So bool red will start out as false. And three additional color flags. So I'll copy and paste to duplicate a few flags. Moving on from red, we have yellow, blue, and green. Now, there are a few more flags we need to address, and that is, again, remembering back to things like the yellow symbol and the blue symbol, we have the D-pad up and D-pad down, where D-pad up indicated that the yellow color was the symbol. This was used in the case of, if we'd hit the yellow drum and the yellow symbol, we would need a flag to tell us which one was the symbol. Mm -hmm. So, we'll drop down a series of flags here, beginning with a flag or a variable called yellow underscore is underscore symbol. Again, defaulting to false. So we have bool yellow is symbol. And then we'll add two more so that we can also have a blue is symbol and a green is symbol. Now, yellow and blue are easy. We can read those directly from their relative button presses. Also, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's also draw up in the mappings that allow us to read in all of our various colors. So, let's copy the last if statement here, our right shoulder if statement, and let's paste it in, let's see, 
one, two, three, four times will take care of our colors, and then two additional times should take care of the remaining flags. So to take care of the colors, we need to say that the A button is going to be read as the green flag, or green set to true. The B button is going to set the red flag to true. The X button is going to set the blue flag to true, and the Y button is going to set the yellow flag to true. Alright, the last two values are going to be D-pad up. D-pad up is going to indicate that the yellow value was a symbol, so we'll say that yellow is symbol will be set to true. And for D-pad down, that indicates that blue is the symbol. And with that, we pretty much just completed a key which decodes everything that comes out of the drum rocker kit. Exactly. This makes everything a lot more readable. So now it's it'll be a lot easier to put the actual logic together where we're checking for things instead of saying, well, if a, if a right shoulder button and a right stick are pressed, do the following. If we came back at a later time and looked over the code, that would make a lot less sense. Mm -hmm. If we say, saw a code that read out as, oh, a cymbal and a pad are pressed, then it's like, oh, that makes sense in drums. That means we hit a cymbal and a drum. Mm -hmm. So just makes it a lot easier to read. All right. Before we get into the decoding, one last thing I want to do is jot down, or rather remember, a specific value. We're going to create a variable here. It's going to be an integer that's called num colors, defaulting to zero. And the idea here is to record the number of different colors that were pressed. This may seem like an odd value to hang on to, but it will become useful when we need to decode things like symbol and drum presses of the same color. Mm -hmm. So we'll put these together and then we'll go over them more in depth as we need them later. So what we'll do is we'll say that if the green flag is set, so if green, then we will increment the number of colors using num colors plus plus, and then we'll do the same for the remaining three colors. So green, red, blue, and yellow. Green, red, blue, and finally yellow. So again, just keeping account on the number of different colors. Now, of course, with any normal drummer holding or wielding two drumsticks, generally we shouldn't end up at more than two colors. Mm -hmm. Though for our purposes, we're only interested in scenarios when there only happens to be one color. So we're not really worried about these stacking up too much. We just want to be able to tell the difference between two colors and one color. But again, more on where that fits into the puzzle here in just a bit. All right, with all of these flags and counts amassed, it is finally time to take a look at doing the actual decoding. That's looking at things like pads and symbols and colors and deciding what actual drum buttons should be pressed as a result. So to begin with, let's put together a section of code that will cause things to happen in the case that there was a symbol hit. So basically we'll start very generally and then start drilling down to more specifics. Okay. So in a general sense, does a symbol happen to be pressed? And now we can easily check that by saying if symbol we check our symbol flag. So if a symbol is pressed, then we know, well, we need to do some stuff. And obviously that means at some point, somehow or another, a symbol button is going to end up being pressed. Now it's up to us to figure out exactly which button. So the first thing that would seem to make sense would be to just look through our flags, our blue is symbol, yellow is symbol, and so on, and that would let us see, well, which one should we actually fire off. So we'll begin with a check here, and we'll say if blue is symbol. So basically, if a symbol was hit, and the symbol marker is pointing at blue, well, then blue's got to be the symbol. So we take our button flags and say or equals to combine with the specific button flag for blue symbol. So that is drum buttons dot blue symbol. Of course, naturally, we're storing this into an integer field, so we'll cast this to a uint. Now, in the case that it wasn't a blue symbol, maybe it was a yellow symbol. So let's put together an else if. 
So else if yellow is symbol, well then the yellow symbol was pressed. So in that case we want to take our button flags and combine that with drum buttons dot yellow symbol. Now if a symbol is being pressed and it wasn't the blue symbol and it wasn't the yellow symbol then it must be the green symbol. So we'll put together an else. I'll just copy and paste to drop this code in more quickly. We'll pull out the if section. So we'll just have a final else to the overall statement saying that the button or the symbol was a green symbol. So looking here that is drum buttons dot green symbol. Now this thing at this point we do we'll do one thing in addition to setting the button flag. Since if we've determined that we have a symbol that's not blue and not yellow, we now know we've reached the point where we need to set the green as symbol flag. Mm -hmm. Because you'll notice up in our flag section, we did create a flag for green as symbol, even though we know that the drum rocker itself is never going to set a specific button to indicate dream, um, green symbol. We instead have to infer from not yellow symbol and not blue symbol. Mm -hmm. But we can do that here looking at the logic. We do have kind a of symbol. like if it's not A or B, it must be C. Exactly. So in this case, for our else statement, I'm going to bro uh, block this in with curly braces so that in addition to setting the button flag, we'll also make sure we remember this in our green is symbol flag. So green is symbol will be set to true. Now, looking at this at a glance, we should be, well, we should have a few extra buttons working at this point. We've reached the point where we're setting various button flags. Those button flags should show up as button presses inside of the game. So at this point, let's run briefly and test things out. Let's go into free play so we can take a look at what some of our drums are doing. So let's hit the yellow symbol. Ooh, very nice, a hi-hat note. Let's test the blue symbol. Ah, very nice, a ride note. And then let me swap the input around so we can gain access to the green symbol. And we get a crash note. Nice. So very nice, we have all three symbols playing into things. Now, the only thing to take note of is the fact that, if you remember back to our raw input section, we saw that hitting two symbols at exactly the same time results in there being no is symbol mm -hmm. flag. So that means if we tried to hit both green and yellow symbols at the same time, that results in a single hi-hat note. So unless I mess up the timing and hit one then the other like that, you can get them side by, or almost side by side. But if you do manage to hit them at exactly the same time, you end up with only a single hit. Gotcha. So we need to resolve that since we are we are unable to rely here on the various flags. So it looks like really the um, the green symbol was the truest. When I was getting just a yellow, it must have registered yellow as a separate press in addition to green. Mm -hmm. But you do notice that green was getting dropped altogether. Because mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the logic, if we hit if we truly did hit both symbols at the same time. Blue is symbol would be false, yellow is symbol would be false, and so by the logic of the else, we would just drop in that would always be a green hit. Okay. So what that would mean is it'd be impossible to do things like hit it, hitting blue and yellow at the same time. So what this means is we need to come up with two sections of logic for symbol. The reason this blue, we wanted to rely on blue as symbol and yellow as symbol is that would make it play very nicely with a pad being hit. Mm -hmm. So if we had a pad hit, we wouldn't have to worry about the specific color. We could just say that, okay, based on the pad, we know that the other one has to be a symbol. But in this case, if there was no pad hit, we need to be able to tell that case. So what we're going to do is set up an additional if statement here inside of the symbol hit and do a check for the pad flag. And if pad is true, then we'll take all the code we currently have for blue as symbol and yellow as symbol and we'll retain all of that code but then we'll add an else statement in addition to this. So in the case of there being a pad hit, we do need to use the blue as symbol and yellow as symbol flag. So we get the we end up getting the correct symbol based on the fact that there was a pad hit. Now if there was no pad being hit, so basically if we know that we are hitting a symbol and we know that we're not hitting a pad, meaning we got into else, then we don't need to worry about blue as symbol and yellow as symbol. We can just directly read the colors because we don't have to worry about which one is the pad, because none of them are the pad. Mm -hmm. So that means we can jump in here and say, if blue is set, at this point just the blue button, we don't even have to worry about 
the symbol flag. So if blue... Right, because if it's not a pad, it must be a symbol. Exactly. So if blue, we'll just drop in the line that's going to assign blue symbol to our button flags. And then the same for yellow and green. So I can copy and duplicate this if statement a few times. And pull that code block up a little bit. So if blue, assign the blue symbol. If yellow, assign the yellow symbol. And if green, then assign the green symbol. And then we just won't worry about the specific um, is yellow and is or is symbol flag. So now we can test this. So inside of free play, we should still have the standard ability to hit different symbols, but we now have the ability to hit them at the exact same time. So briefly, I'm also going to test the blue symbol. Put that back into the mix as the ride. So we can do each each one separate, or both of them at the same time. Because that was the other thing that looks like it was preventing us from hitting multiple symbol hits, even if we had a blue and yellow, is mm -hmm. the fact that this is an else if. We're only going to get one of those, not both. Right. Whereas the logic in the case where we're only dealing with symbols, each one is its own if statement. That means we can get blue and yellow to be set at, the, at both at the same time, resulting in a simultaneous hit. So looking at this, the nice thing here is we now have all of our symbol logic taken care of. Now we can move on to drum pad logic. So we'll jump in here right after the if statement for symbol logic, and we'll put together a new if statement. So we'll say if a pad was hit. So in the case that a pad was hit, we need to look at what color of pad was hit and whether or not that would have been a symbol hit, so whether we need to cancel the hit. Now in the case of red, we don't have a red symbol at all, so we know that if pad is hit and if red is hit, so let's drop, jot this down real quick, an if statement, so saying if color red is being hit, then we know that we can fire off a call, a flag for the red drum. So button flags will be or equal the int casted result of drum buttons dot red drum. So red is very easy. Again, there's no conflict with any symbol. Now, if we advance from here, the next thing we need to look at is the blue drum. So if a pad is hit and blue is hit, we have to be careful. We can't directly go in and say blue drum. We need to take into account whether or not the blue hit was a symbol hit. So if we we hit a pad, we hit the color blue, and the color blue is not the symbol. So not blue is symbol. And let me make sure I get the and operator in there. So that gives us enough logic to safely resolve the blue drum. If a drum is hit, if pad, if the color blue is hit, and blue is not the symbol, well, that leaves blue open to be the drum. Now we can do the same thing for the remaining colors. We'll drop this in two more times so that we can address yellow. So if yellow is hit and yellow is not the symbol, so not yellow is symbol, then we can assign the yellow drum. And finally, if the color green is hit, and green is not the symbol, so not green is symbol, then we can assign the green drum. And this is why it was important to set the green as symbol flag earlier, because mm -hmm. we reached a point in logic where it was very convenient to note that, ah, well, the green symbol is hit, so we record that in the flag later, and that makes it very easy to tell when we're inside of the pad checks here. So looking at all of this, it looks like we are ready to test once again. So let's bring the game up for play and go through our various drums. So red drum, very good, we get a snare. Yellow drum, we get the high tom, so then blue and green are the subsequent mid and low toms. So that takes care of all four of our drums. And of course, we still have cymbals, and we should be able to do interesting combinations like if we wanted to do hi-hat and snare at the same time, that results in everything resolving correctly. Very nice. Now granted, not all of those hits were at the same time. Yeah. Well, your bent's at a funny angle. 
So yeah, having to go back and forth between the computer and the drum kit. But we can see that we can get multiple hits. So doing things like, let's swap the symbol back to green and do green symbol, green drum. And they can be hit at, actually looking at that. Ah, that's, ooh, that's very interesting. The one last thing we need to address. I just tripped on it on green. I was expecting to hit it on yellow. Let's take a look at what's happening. So, so far we can do combinations if the colors differ. Green and blue, not a problem. What about yellow and yellow? So you're seeing a purple note on screen that's actually bound to the yellow drum. But what happens if we try to hit them at the same time? Ooh, only one of the one, notes. but not the other. And then right back to what we were seeing with the green cymbal and green drum. I like using these because they're easier to see on the screen. Mm -hmm. Hitting them at the same time, only the cymbal. We're dropping the note, the pad note in that case. So what's happening there that's causing us to lose the pad hit? Well, looking at it, it should be fairly obvious. If we're hitting the cymbal and the pad, it means pad will be true at this point. We are hitting a drum pad because we're hitting the green drum. So we get down here and we say that, okay, we are hitting the color green, but look at what happens. And we're not and the uh, we're not hitting the green symbol. We are hitting the green symbol. Mm. Therefore, we avoid setting this. Gotcha. So what's happening is we're getting a little bit too overzealous with our cutout checks and pulling out the green drum just because the green symbol was hit. This is why we needed to record the number of colors that were hit because the special scenarios where we're dropping out, in the case of two yellow notes across drum and pad or two green notes across uh, drum and cymbal, those can be countered by looking at the number of colors. Basically, we can allow an exception to this rule. The moment we have only one color, mm -hmm. then it's okay to have green as cymbal and green as the pad. Sure. So through, And that'll be true through all of these, blue, yellow, and green. So beginning at blue, what we'll do is we'll put an extra set of parentheses around the not blue is symbol check. So we'll say not blue is symbol, or the number of colors happens to be one. So that would be num colors is equal to one. Meaning you're hitting a blue pad and a blue symbol. Exactly. So that will allow an exception where if we had been doing that, we hit a blue pad and a blue symbol. So pad is true, of course. Blue is true, of course. Now, blue is symbol is true, but we're resolving that to not. Or we can get by if the number of colors is one. Now, if both the pad and the symbol were blue, we're only going to have one color. That was the mm -hmm. only color hit. So the number of colors will be one and allows us to do that part of the check and allows us to set the blue drum. So we need to do the same thing for all of these, but an additional set of parentheses around both of them, and then finish off that set of parentheses with or num colors is equal to one. And then I pasted that last parenthesis in along with the copy. So that inner parenthesis just for around the inner check. So let's try this out. Let's see if we can get two green notes at exactly the same time. So looking here, we have green note, green note, and ah, nice. two green notes. Now we should be able to do the same for yellow, which of course look uh, like that purple color on screen. But we can hit them at the same time. One final check would be two blue notes at the same time, blue drum, blue cymbal, and we can do that as well. So now we have the ability to hit any combination of drums that we would like. So looking here, with that, that takes care of all of our drum and all of our cymbal decoding. Now there is one last thing we need to address. We had a set of buttons that were currently tied up because they may be part of a combination. That includes all the different colored buttons, A, B, X, and Y, and the D-pad up and down values. We would still like to be able to use those values, but we need to make sure that they're not being used as part of a combination. In order to do that, we'll just do a simple check and see that if we are getting an input press, but it's not a pad and it's not a symbol, then we know that whatever button is coming in should just be used by itself. Mm -hmm. So putting this together as an if statement, that would look like if not pad... And not symbol, then any combination participant is now doesn't have to be considered as part of a combination and can be used directly. So what that means is if the green button is pressed, so reading the whole thing out, if not pad and not symbol and green button, the only thing left that could cause that would be the A button. So that means we'll take our button flags and combine that 
with drum buttons dot green or rather a so scrolling all the way to the top of the list we have a and that takes care of green now we need to do this no, before we do this three more times, let's remember to cast that to uint before storing it in button flags. All right, so looking at this here, copying our if statement three additional times, looking at things like if the red color was hit, assign the B button. If the blue color was hit, assign the X button. And if the yellow button was hit, assign the Y button. All right, now two buttons left are the D-pad up and D-pad down. Of course, normally those would be yellow symbol or blue symbol. So we do a check and say if yellow is symbol, then we'll take our button flags, combine with, as a matter of fact, a sudden stroke of laziness has hit me, so I'm just going to copy one of these lines. <laughs> and paste in button, rather drum buttons, dot d pad up. And we can copy this statement for blue is symbol, giving us d pad down. And just because yellow is symbol and blue is symbol is a little less obvious, what I mean by that is binding green to the A button makes sense if you're looking at a controller. Mm -hmm. Binding yellow is symbol, that's a very foreign concept just thinking about a controller. So, I mean, actually, I was going to write a comment down, but that's easy enough to see. That sure. links up to the D-pad. So there are D-pad up, D-pad down. Again, in this case, all of our, what I'm calling combination participant buttons, in this case, we know are free of any combination. We're not worried about a drum hit or a cymbal hit. So therefore, they can be assigned directly to their respective buttons. Mm -hmm. So to test these out, we can test them by jumping into the game and making sure we can use things like the D-pad up and down directions. Now, I'm not sure if we were binding A, B, X, or Y anywhere. So just to be able to test one of these, let me briefly jump into our config file and then go into, let's try global input where we were originally setting space, the space key on the keyboard to be bound to reset. Let's bind that to, let's see, instead of our gamepad bindings, let's bind that to the A button. So I'm going to paste this line in place. Actually, rather than a gamepad binding, I need to look a little bit further to drum binding. There we go. So what we'll do is we'll make a drum bind for port 1, device input being the A button, just so that we can test one of those formerly used buttons. We'll set that to be the game input of uh, reset. And then we'll set the player to be player 2. And that'll let us test that button. So then, back to free play. And then two of the buttons I didn't even think about testing were the D-pad up and down. Those in free play are bound to tempo. So hitting the buttons now on the Rock Band 2 controller, we can see that we can speed up and slow down our free play mode. And if we hit the A button, we should see the hit line reappear. As a matter of fact, even better, let me hit some keys on the keyboard just to see some notes. Mm -hmm. And then A button on the controller, and everything resets. Nice. So that has shown that we are reading in here inside of drum state. The A button is getting successfully read, or excuse me, green color is getting successfully read in as the A button. We're also seeing that D-pad up and down are indeed working. So with that, we now have our controller fully in action. One final quick test run we can do would be to just look through all of the drums. So going from the top to the bottom would be... And then, well, a slow switch would give us the last one, our <laughs> crash. But that is showing all of the various drums. So we now have succeeded in our initial goal of giving ourselves eight individual drum inputs off of a Rock Band 2 controller. That's awesome. So we now have our drum state struct completely finished. That puts the last piece of the puzzle, which is decoding logic, together with our already existing classes of things like drum input and the necessary binding code and so on. So with that, that's not only going to wrap up this video, but it's also going to take care of the Rock Band 2 controller input bonus section.